Chapter 7 The Necklace by Guy de Maupassant The necklace describes the unfortunate disaster that befalls a lower middle class woman who was never content with who she was and what she had. She always felt sad at the absence of a lavish lifestyle and succumbed to this urge one day. She borrowed a diamond necklace from a rich friend in order to attend a ball. Unfortunately, she lost this piece of jewellery and had to undergo a difficult struggle to compensate this loss. Summary of the chapter Madame Matilda Loisel is a very pretty and charming woman. She feels that she is born to enjoy delicacies and luxuries of life. Unfortunately, she is too poor to afford her rich dreams, so she suffers constantly, lamenting her destiny. Married to Loiselle, a clerk at the Board of Education, Matilda makes her life more miserable by comparing her humble reality with the dream to live a life of affluence and luxury. She dreams of adorning herself with exquisite dresses, but in reality, she has neither frocks nor jewels, nothing. Her husband cares for her and tries to cheer her up by admiring the little blessings of their ordinary life. One day, he brings to her an invitation to a party from the Minister of Public Instruction. But Matilda feels even more miserable on getting this invite. She fumes as she does not find any of her dresses suitable enough for the grand occasion. Her husband does not wish to miss this opportunity, so he readily parts with 400 francs that he had saved for a hunting gun so that Matilda could buy herself a party dress. A few days before the ball party, Loiselle notices that Matilda has a gloomy appearance. He asks her the reason and she reveals that she does not have a decent piece of jewellery to match the gown. He advises her to wear some natural flowers but Matilda does not like this advice. Her husband then suggests that she can borrow the jewellery from her rich friend, Madame Forestier. Finding this to be a good idea, Matilda goes to her friend the next day and shares her problem. The good Madame Forestier offers the entire box of jewels to Matilda so that she may take a piece of her choice. After examining and admiring the collection, Matilda finally borrows a superb necklace of diamonds. An elegant, gracious, smiling and joyful Matilda reaches the ball, dressed in her new dress adorned by the diamond necklace. Her charm and beauty draws the attention of everyone in the party. Matilda enjoys all the attention while her husband waits patiently in one of the little salons. The couple leaves for home at 4 o'clock in the morning. They have difficulty in finding a carriage for the homeward journey and are really tired by the time they reach home. When Matilda prepares to go to bed, she notices to her horror that her necklace is missing. A dismayed Roselle looks all over for the lost piece of jewellery, but to no avail. Finally, he advises Matilda to write to her friend that she has broken the clasp of the necklace and that she would have it repaired. Roselle wanted to buy some time to replace the loss. At the Palais Royal, he finds a replica of the lost piece, valued at 40,000 francs, but available for 36,000. He borrows money and pools it with the 18,000 francs that he had inherited from his father. Then he goes and gets the new chaplet of diamonds. Matilda returns the jewellery to her friend and is relieved that the change remains hidden. However, a long and difficult period of struggle begins for the Loiselle couple. They drastically cut down their expenses and adopt an economical lifestyle to repay the debt. They send away the maid, change their lodgings and rent some rooms in an attic. The next 10 years, Matilda spends in utter poverty, want and misery. Her wrinkled face, unkempt hair and untidy clothes give her an ugly look. One day, she happens to meet her old friend Madame Forestier. 
years of hard work reflect in Matilda's appearance. Madame Forestier finds it difficult to recognize her and asks her the reason behind such a drastic change. Matilda accuses her for the hard times that she had seen and discloses the truth about the lost necklace. Then comes a rude shock of fate. A deeply touched Madame Forestier tells Matilda that the diamond necklace that she had lent her was actually a piece of cheap imitation jewellery worth not over 500 francs. Theme of the chapter The first part of the story deals with the theme If wishes were horses, beggars would ride. Fate plays such a vital role in our lives that those who try to spend beyond their means land up in deep trouble. Unrealistic aspirations bring frustration and discontentment. The latter half of the story brings out how adversity shapes an individual into a stronger and a mature human being. The choice to uphold her dignity motivates Matilda to repay the debt and live a hard life. But this experience makes her develop a sense of pride about her abilities and enhances her self-esteem. Message of the Chapter the story conveys the message of contentment. It is better to count one's blessings instead of yearning for false glory. Unreasonable desires can prove to be disastrous as it did in the case of the Loiselles. Matilda had enough to live with dignity but her desire for the excesses and extravagance deprived her even of the little that she had. Therefore, her story gives us a message that one should remain within one's means. Title of the chapter The story revolves around the necklace that brought a drastic turning point in Loazel's life. Matilda's urge to look beautiful made her borrow the necklace from her friend. Its loss robbed her and her husband of their peace of mind. The loss of the necklace not only helped Matilda become a more sensible person, but also made her stronger and more patient. The necklace is at the center of action in the end, also when Madame Forestier reveals to Matilda that her necklace was a fake. A necklace that was supposed to give Matilda immense happiness proved to be a source of immense suffering for her. Hence, the necklace is the central point of the story and is an apt title. Characters in the chapter Matilda Loisel Pretty as a picture, Matilda is very graceful, suitable for an affluent household but born into a family of clerks. She often sulks at her fate. Further, she is married to a petty clerk who works in the office of the Board of Education and has modest earnings with which he is unable to fulfill the rich dreams of his wife. Indulging in self-pity, Matilda feels that life has been very unkind to her and circumstances have cheated her of what she deserves. She is simple but is unhappy because she is dissatisfied with what life has offered her. This complaining nature controls all her actions. She constantly grumbles about her poverty and craves for riches, luxury, comfort and attention. Her dissatisfaction and self-pity makes her and her husband's life miserable. However, she has some good traits too that get revealed during the adverse circumstances. Once humbled and humiliated, Matilda bears her loss and misery heroically. Though unused to daily chores, she takes upon herself all the drudgery without complaining. She courageously bears the responsibility of helping her husband pay off the debt and therefore tries her level best to make her contribution. Her quality of self-respect eventually makes her a very strong and tenacious woman. Mr. Loisel a humble clerk in the Board of Education, Loiselle is a contented person. He is quite happy being what he is, an ordinary, middle-class man. He does not believe in putting up appearances and enjoys his simple food and has no shame in accepting his low position or meagre means. 
He is at peace with himself, his surroundings and life. He has simple desires and joys which he can afford to have within his limited resources. He is thankful for all the little graces, even the good pot pie. A loving, caring and sacrificing husband, he adores his wife very much and gives up his desire to own a gun so that she may buy a new party dress. He even brings home for her a rare invitation to a ball at the ministry. Practical and wise, he cuts his coat according to his cloth. He suggests to his wife to borrow some jewellery to wear for the night. He is very understanding and sets his priorities right. When the necklace is lost, he frantically searches for it without holding Matilda's vanity, immaturity or negligence responsible for the entire mess. A gentleman and a good human being, Loiselle silently suffers for 10 years without complaining even once. Hence, Loisel comes out as an ideal man who contributes wholeheartedly to his married life. Madame Forestier Madame Forestier was a comfortably rich lady, but wealth had not made her arrogant. She was large-hearted and had retained her relationship with her school friend Matilda, even though the latter was married to a clerk. The gap in their social and financial status never once made her feel the need to sever her relationship with Matilda. So much so that she opened her entire box of jewellery in front of Matilda and asked her to take anything of her choice. Though rich, she did not flaunt her wealth. However, this clear-hearted person could be blunt if the other person took undue liberty. That is why she coldly tells Matilda that she could have taken care to return her necklace in time. Later, her meeting with Matilda in the park shows her to be a well-mannered person as she addresses the plain good wife, who is actually Matilda, politely. This tender-hearted person is deeply moved on realizing that she was indirectly responsible for her friend's plight. Feeling genuinely bad for her friend, she instantly tells her the truth about the worth of her necklace. Madame Forestier hence proves to be a true friend and a nice human being. 